We're live! Here we go. Hi everyone, it's Friday! Yeah. Oh, uh, and you know what that means? It means it's time for an afternoon mini painting stream with me, Jake, and my good friend Josh. Uh, it's good to see you all in chat. Uh, we're back with our good friend, King Axel. Get close up here. Yeah, there he is. Ah, oh, look how cute he is. Is cute the right word for a dwarf? Uh, I think it depends on the dwarf. Okay. Do you think King Axelm likes being called cute? By the right person. By the right person? Yeah. I'll take it. Yeah. I'll take it. Queen. Queen. Uh, hammer. Yes? Shield. Queen Hammer Shield! Yeah. Uh, his, his doting, lovely wife can call him that. No one said she was his wife. Oh. Well, she's the queen. Of maybe another clan of... Oh! Dwarves. Scandalous! He maybe doesn't have a queen yet. Maybe include they... that... Include that in your stories, guys. Yeah. Queen Hammer Shield. Shield. <laughs> and King Axel. And King Axel. <laughs> Edric Snow, I, I know I'm not Kelsey... Um, oh man, they had one week with Kelsey, and they're already yeah, they're they're already sick of you. <laughs> It's like sorry, guys, guys. Kelsey was a temporary. Yeah, Jake, I'm the OG. Jake's 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 the real one. She's a strong, independent dwarf. She don't need no king. That's the problem. I think we need to, man. Okay, sometime in the future, I'm gonna take a note of Queen uh, Hammer Shield. And she's going to be, someday, we'll never talk about her again. Um, <laughs> wow! Terrain lore, I see how it is. We want Kelsey, not this N-E-R-D. But then he said, JK, you're cool. Um, you know what? <laughs> Terrain lore? Still still hurts a little. You're, uh, yeah, you're, you're on Jake probation right now, okay, bud? <laughs> Shots fired. Um, you know what? Uh, I'm liking the the flaming axe here. Yeah. The or the I don't know. It looks like it's been like fire forged. Yeah. Like it looks uh, like he just took it out of the fire and he's about yeah. to like rush in with it. Yeah. Uh. So. But we did lose some detail. There. Because it was just kind of. Uh. I kind of gooped it on a little too heavy. But I wonder if this might help. This is where Josh gets really experimental and just starts throwing paints awesome. on. I'm all for it. And we may just end up ruining it, but we'll see. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna maybe play around a little bit with the Cassandora Yellow Shade, the Bloodletter Glaze, and the Lamenter's Yellow Glaze. So I'm gonna play around with these three elements a little bit just to see if I can maybe. <clears throat> get a cool effect going yeah and i'm actually gonna put them on my palette i don't usually put these things on my palette but that might be holding me back maybe like you know what i mean like the if i maybe this will bring forth a renaissance of your paint you know like this will open up your eyes to new things putting all kinds of stuff on your palette yeah you know you're expanding your palette well you know what's funny is anytime that i've heard from a like a like a legit painter mm -hmm. they talk about using a wash or a glaze they still talk about that you should be thinning it right yeah but i always just grab it right out of the bucket which is as non-thin as it can get so to each their own dude yeah okay this is a very glowing palette because it's got the fire from monday all that red paint that we used for the axe And now I'm just doing this stuff to it. Okay. Alright, that's enough of that. But yeah, probably the... I'm probably going to save the beard for last. Yeah? Yeah. Make that, you know, the cake, the dessert of the, the paint? Yes. I also know it might frustrate me more than anything else. <laughs> the... It's probably my least favorite part of my... Uh, frost giant. That I did. I, I, I really thought that I knew what I was gonna do with right. this guy's beard. I think it looks fine. It looks fine. It's not as distinct or as, you. as I as I wanted it to be. Yeah, there you go. So it, 
it just ended up being kind of still an awesome paint job. I it's still it. great, and I think I think the like when it comes to the composition, mm-hmm. I'm happy with the beard. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I, I'm, it passes the test. But like I even added these like these uh, with with some green stuff. I added like little like knotted cords in it, but you just can't really see them really. They just I, so that's I just didn't make it really like just isn't distinct a enough. really dis- yeah, yeah like each each hair isn't really doesn't have like a unique each strand isn't really its own thing but at the same time I don't I don't know that I necessarily like this type of hair mm-hmm. where you take every single strand and make it one giant strand yeah with like little tiny striations within it the I'm a much bigger fan of when they actually like make each hair have its own ripple and its own kind of like and, and rather than it being these really harsh tendrils it's more like it weaves you know what i mean it's more yeah it's a little well, more organic it's like uh well those atlantis minis did that yes where you know you could really see the detail in the hair yeah and the hair wasn't just like a plastic piece that they had put yes. on yes it, it yeah, actually yeah, yeah. felt like or looked i should say mm-hmm. like you know yeah a beard in this sense i like axe helm because he's just got these three giant beard tides like mm-hmm. beard knots basically are like that that they've corded his beard in so even though it has kind of the same problem where it's just like the it's so small that you can't really give a lot of detail to it so it's just like little tiny lines on these kind of bigger chunks yeah i do think it helps it oh camera oops um what are you thinking so. uh beard wise you think you're gonna go the i think i'm gonna go full uh gray okay i'm gonna go full gray maybe if i can pull it off with like where it's really dark near the near his face Mm -hmm. and then gets lighter as it goes out but i think that's gonna look best with the reflection of the axe yeah if i try and mix some orange in there there's already gonna be that orange i think i'm just gonna be yeah hurting myself in the long run with that Ooh, have fun at lunch ellen i'll read through uh let's see is she watching while lunching or is she going to lunch so she's not gonna be around well, are you leaving, Ellen? Oh. <laughs> oh. Wait, hold on. I need to go all the way back. Queso. Oh, my gosh. I would go for some queso. Uh, Chipotle right now is doing, like, queso with their burritos. And you can get a good little, like, bit of queso on your burrito. And it was muy. Caliente? Caliente. But in a really good way. <laughs> um... Terrarian, terrar yeah, terrarian lore. Terrarian lore. I uh, just bumped out. Uh, not uh, yeah. You know what? You're terrar. You're terrain lore, uh, because you called me a, a nerd, huh? So have fun with that one. Um, oh shoot, Josh is going crazy. Scientist, a bit. He uh, he. We're, we're really we're trying some new experimental things over here. Yeah. Um. <coughs> Are we good in focus on that? Does that look alright? Yes. Right? Um, um, bring him in just a bit. Into the shot? Uh, no, you're well, you're you're centered. Just focus him. There we go. Now he looks good. Still good. Yes. Okay. Um, Cass just showed up. Hey, Cass, what's up? Uh, what's up, Cass? Edric Snow says, "Look, I'm just saying there should be a giveaway sometime." I'm sure many of us would be honored to TPK a group with one of Josh's minis. That might be something we do in the long run. Yeah. At some point. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go get some lunch. See you, Ellen. Uh, hey, Album. Uh, good to see you, man. Um, Mr. Cheese. Oh, I just called him Mr. Cheese instead of Mr. Heat in. Uh, cheese is the best food. Anything. We're, this chat's really been in the cheese mood. Uh, the last week. Really? Yeah, because remember we were asked what our favorite kind of cheese was? Um, oh, yeah. Was that when Kels was here? Uh, yeah, I think so. That's kind of her thing. She loves cheese. Cheese is the best food. Anything that put, you put I had on. some legit Wisconsin cheese curds the other day. Ooh. So one of the guys at our office is from Wisconsin, and he uh, came, Wisconsin. came back from, I think they went there for Thanksgiving. And so they came back, and he walked in with a with a bag of curds. Oh. Whoo! They were Man. good. It was that kind of cheese that as you're chewing it, you can like hear it squeak yeah. a little bit on your teeth. That's... Oh. Really Have you good. ever had... Uh, my favorite popcorn really is... Um, is... Oh, gosh. What's it called? Um, 
what's the Chicago uh, Chicago popcorn place that everyone goes to? It's like oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, because we're gonna go there when we're in um, Chicago. Is it's a G right? Or am I? I, I know yeah, I, like G's chic, G's po- popcorn. Yeah, G's popcorn. <laughs> yeah, G's popcorn. G's popcorn. Um, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, okay. Chicago. I should know this. I feel gross that I don't. Anyway, it's like cheese. You know that cheese, like popcorn? Garrett's. Garrett's popcorn. Um, Starts with a G. Yeah. It's like that. It's like, it's just, it's the cheesiest, like, ugh. Mm, 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 mm. I can't even explain how good it tastes. It's like, like the renaissance in your mouth, you know? Uh, You get all this. It's just, it's really good. It is good. Jake Peterson, man of words. <laughs> I know how to speak English. <laughs> Edric Snow, are you the only not cheese person here? Uh, cheese is like an American pastime, dude. So if you're not an American, uh, you, I guess you can take a pass. pass. Um, but if you are an American, yes, you are the only non-cheese person in the entire United States. And I'm sorry, I, I, that's not, like, a bad thing. That kind of makes you, like, a unicorn, you know? Like, but at the same time, cheese, dude. Miss now. Here's the deal, though. I Here's where I'm a sympathizer with non-cheese lovers. Mm-hmm. Is I'm not a huge fan of just, like, eating cheese alone. Oh, yeah. Gross. Like, I, I think it needs to be matched with some form of delicious bread. Yeah, you need, like, or a meat. cracker. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. You, yes. Oh, gosh. Um, get some of that summer sausage, as well as some some Ritz crackers. Put it together with some good. Edric cheese just said, "I'm about as American as you are, Kelsey." I'm Kelsey now. He said he called you Kelsey. Yeah, I'll take it. Um, uh, but he's from Switzerland. Yeah. So we that's, got a lot. Know, of, we got a lot of non-U.S. That's uh, awesome. Watchers. I'm really jealous of that, actually. <laughs> Isn't Swiss cheese something that they're known for, though? Maybe he just feels like it's been overdone. Like oh, maybe, just, yeah, you know, maybe he's a cheese purist. It's too much. Question at Josh. I've never painted minis before, but I'd love to try it. What do I need to buy in order to create a decently painted mini? Um, in order to create a decently painted mini, you're going to need to create um, a good handful of poorly painted minis. Nice. Uh, so just brace yourself for that. If you, Unless you're like already like a an artist of some level of repute. Um because, like, there are painters who can take to this, like, like swimming. You know what I mean? Right. But uh, I, I'd say probably your best bet, go with Reaper Miniatures. If you go to any game store, any local game store, you'll find Reaper Miniatures. There are these... Edric went to art school, so he knows exactly White plastic what ones. Oh, yeah. Okay, he did? Yeah. yeah. Then, yeah, he'll... Then he will paint a really decent mini. Then, Edric, all you need is you need, you need some good brushes. I highly recommend these guys. Series 7. Finest Sable. Uh, Kolinsky brushes. <clears throat> I think that's what they are. Really good. I've got a two, a uh, one, and a zero. But I would also recommend if you're wanting to go like super detail, get a double zero. That's what I. That's one of the things I need to double invest in. Double zero. Um, but then, uh, then I would say, do your research on paints. Um, if you're already an artist, you probably know what kind of paints you like working with, what kind of colors you like. Vallejo has the widest color range, so you can pretty much get any color you want. Citadel, it's all about those bright, vibrant colors. It's a Warhammer thing. Yeah. Um, they're really, really, they pop. Uh, let me see here. <clears throat> Army Painter is all about really earthy tones. Like, this is even a blue, but it's like, it's, yeah. a, it's a wash, but it's really, uh, really earthy. Um, MSP... Master Series paints, that's that's Reaper Miniatures paint series. I don't know. They're okay paints. I got zero problems with them. And yeah. they typically sell them in sets of three, so they can, like, all come together, like the three three that go together well. But their packaging is, like, some of the cheapest cheapest packaging I've ever seen. Oh, yeah, check that so out. So it just doesn't feel super professional. Um, I don't know if the rest of their paints are like that, just the ones that I own. Where do they fit like price that. range? Um, they're about the same as Vallejo. Okay. So they're going to be... But like, look at this. Like, this is so. This is Vallejo. Oh yeah, I just ordered and some it's just, Vallejo. It's paints. like an. It's a whole different. You know. Yeah. 
level of quality feels like. So, the you know either of those, but uh, oh, uh, who was it again? That was looking for paints. Edric, e- uh, Edric, Edric. Um, even if you got a Reaper miniature, be sure to get a primer of some kind, because uh, even though they advertise that you don't need to prime the white plastic, uh, you do. Yeah. You, sh- you should. Yeah, yeah. It can be really thin, but just paint's just not gonna stick to plastic. Right. As well, it's going to stick to a primer. That's just the bottom line. Um, if you want it to look really nice, be sure and get an X-Acto knife to cut off some of the mold lines. Um, and depending on the miniature you've got, you might want to get some Milliput or green stuff mm-hmm. to fill in gaps. And then, uh, um, uh, what, what else am I thinking of here? What else is kind of like what I would think in order to make a really nice looking mini? Um, that's pretty much it. Then I would also encourage you to get a thinner. Um, I, I have this this guy here. I don't use it all the time because yeah. my wet palette pretty much like thins my paint about as good as it, it can sometimes. You're using a paint-on primer, right? Um, what's that? You're using a paint-on primer, not a spray-on, right? I am, but you can use a spray-on. Okay. The, yeah. Either the, or. You just got to know you gotta know how to use spray-ons. Right. So I'm a rookie with spray-on primers, and so a couple times I've botched up my miniatures with spray-on where like I didn't shake the can enough, so the spray was really chunky, and I ended up co- coating my minis with this bubbly kind of like. Oh yeah, actually that's that's look. funny. Mr. Wood, uh, Woody, Wood, Wood, Woody, I uh, said the same thing. Makes yeah. his minis look sticky. Or... Yeah. So I mean, feel it, feel it out for yourself. Yeah. The, um, I've I've been paint on for a long time. If you did spray, I would suggest doing it with an actual like airbrush okay that's gonna get you a really fine uh spray that's not gonna show up like those spray cans will yeah those those are used for mass quantities of miniatures guys who are in war gaming if you're trying to make like a just a beautiful looking miniature then i would suggest taking your time with it you don't need to paint a dozen of them that look exactly the same so there's no reason for you to shirk the quality so just go over with the brush instead um but yeah that's my that's my like. What was that like? My five minute drill on. That was good, actually. What you what you'd need um, to, to make a decent looking miniature. Edric says he's gonna go pick up some minis tomorrow, and he's gonna send them to our Twitter. Please Dude, do. Dude, do it. Yeah, man. Please. I'm excited to see what you guys are doing. Yeah. I'm excited to see what Swiss miniatures look like. Yeah. And here's what I will say too. That was a joke, by the way. Because <laughs> I'm guessing they look the same. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there are some really bomb miniature oh, designers sure. in Sweden. Uh, the the quality of your mini will somewhat be dictated by the qu- like the quality of your final paint on the miniature will somewhat be dictated by the quality of the miniature itself. Right. Like one of the reasons that a lot of my guys this small don't look half as, you know, cool as like guys that are this big is simply because size-wise. I can it's just size. Like the yeah. details are easier to pick out. Um this is this was also just a better D, the D and D series yeah. collector series minis are just better looking miniatures. All in all, the plastic is better. Okay. The mold is better. <laughs> Gorilla with the brush uh, on my my Swiss miniatures comment. So they look the same, but Wait. they just have holes in them. Gorilla with the brushes in the chat. Yeah. That's the guy. That's the painter I was telling you guys about. Oh really? Yeah. That's Gorilla the brush. That's like the B A painter guy that to, that I he I, we tweeted in a message. And he gave me a whole thing. What's up, man? Hey, welcome. Yeah, welcome, dude. Ooh. I'm kind of like intimidated now because I suck compared to what you've got. You don't going on. suck, but Josh. I, you know what? I'm I'm I, I like to think that I'm aware of of my of my level of skill, so I, I know I'm not. You don't suck. I'm nowhere near like the master level, but you only suck if you don't try. There you go. And I my goal has always been to just keep getting better. But dude, thanks for coming and checking out the stream. I that was a toll. That's a total treat, guys. Yeah, Josh is fanboy in here. Yeah. Mr. Heath. It's okay. Um, Gorilla with a Brush says, you don't suck. Good to be here. Right Glad, glad to have you, man. Um, let's see. Ellen, they didn't have tortillas? How did they... Did you go to, like, an actual Tex-Mex place? Or how did they run out of tortillas? Yeah, that doesn't seem like a... That's kind of like their... That's, like, what they're known for. Yeah. Right? You gotta. Was it a food truck? What's like the? Oh yeah, I guess if it was a food truck, but even then, you know, if you're if you're like if you pride yourself on your Mexican cuisine, oh jeez, better have uh, you better have some tortillas. 
I got a hair coming off of my brush that's no good. This is one of my old nasty brushes. I'm just using it to mix the paints and get a nice big giant hairbrush in there. Brush hair. Dude, okay, so let's talk about wow. Okay, yeah. Because wow. you, me you mentioned you mentioned it oh, my. on our drive on our drive here. So Wow and I told you this, Wow and me have a very complicated history. Yeah. I started playing WoW during Wrath of the Wi uh, Wrath of the Lich King. Okay. Which was third expansion. Uh, and what's crazy is I just WoW just did their thirteen year anniversary. Yep. At BlizzCon? Yeah. Um Or or the Well they launched uh vanilla. Yeah. When, yeah, yeah. when 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 vanilla came out, thirteen years, um, which is insane to me because that means that Wrath probably came out ten years ago. Yeah, which means that I've probably been playing WoW longer than any other video game in my entire life. Granted, I've been taking very long extended breaks. You know, I'll take like a yeah. year off and yeah. then I'll play for like two weeks straight, and then I'll take another year off. Um, but I've always loved WoW because it's just such a like. First off, I played the, um, thanks Cass, I am a nerd, um, <laughs> oh, that was the stupidest thing I've ever done. That was a weird noise. Yeah, that was, you know what, we're gonna move on, we're gonna move past that, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna, yeah, we're, we're Are we cool. gonna move past the chat? Are we just gonna forget that? Shh, we don't need okay. to bring on my email. Um, right. so, I played the old RTS games, um, that's how I got into WoW originally, uh, cause I, they were like the only games that I had when I was like 10. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, like, they were my cousins, and I played them. I played the crap out of Warcraft 3. Um, and so, when, when World of Warcraft came out, uh, my parents wouldn't let me get it, because it was online, and, um, they, well, at first, they, they thought it was too mature, but then they also didn't want me, uh, spending, like, 15 bucks a month on subscription. And I fought tooth and nail to try and get my parents to just let me get world of warcraft yeah eventually i uh i started picking up odd jobs with my grandma uh and she said that if i came out and just did like you know her chores um she would pay me 15 bucks a month and i was like well well grandma that's exactly how much a world of warcraft subscription is whoa so it was faded it was faded and i pretty sure she knew because i wouldn't shut up about world of warcraft yeah um so it, it took like three years for me to finally get it and i finally got wrath of the lich king and you know burning crusade and world of warcraft and i install them on my computer and my computer just like craps out <laughs> like it can't even like <laughs> comprehend <laughs> Um, that's like the mark of a guy who hasn't really played PC exactly. games. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like it you was don't like, really consider. I could run '90s computer games. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but the minute I throw like a 2004 on there, everything it's game over. Yeah. So, um, so I had like probably one of them. It was probably like the moment that I I, I learned that life wasn't fair. Um, that was the moment. Yeah. Wow. Uh, when it came to video games. So young. Um. It was like it was prepping me for EA, that uh, you know, <laughs> video game companies. So you you're getting ready for Assassin's yeah. Creed. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I became a bitter old man at the at the young tender age of like ten or eleven. <laughs> um, so, uh, I had the games, but I couldn't uh, play them. But my neighbor down this, my neighbor down a couple houses, uh, his name was Jackson, and he had the game. And, um, so I will go over to his house, log into his computer with my account and play on his for like, like three hours every day. And me and him would just hang out and explore Azeroth. And it was amazing. It, it, it's That's, like, I will say this. WoW has made in, like massive increments better Yeah. when you're not doing it by yourself. Oh yeah. No, WoW is one of those games that if I'm playing it by myself, I just don't have fun. You're not you're not really experiencing the game, and, at, in my opinion, at that point. Yeah, and yeah. and being like so young, being like ten, and just having this huge open world. This was before Skyrim. This was before like Dragon Age. This was before like you know this is this is back in the time yeah. where you the know only, you, you had like um, the old D and D like Neverwinter Nights. Yeah, I was gonna say the only real like like uh, open world games before it were really the the tabletop games. Yeah. And and so this this it was incredible, and and I remember me and my friends running around Teldrassil because we played night elves because you know we wanted to be Legolas. Yeah. Um, and such fond memories. We were complete crap at the game. 
Sure. Um, we, uh, you know, I, 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 noobs. I logged on to, uh, I, my original server was Undermine, um, and I logged on to my character just the other, you know, because I, I just started playing again, and we'll get to that. But I logged in, and his his name was Malicious, like, uh, you know, like the word malicious, but I completely misspelled it. Uh, and it was M A L A C I I O U S. Because, you know, you had to be special with it. Um, and like, so, uh, oh, oh, like in Ready Player One. Yeah. How his character is uh, Parzival instead right. of Parzival. Right. With a Z instead of a C. Because y- y- yeah, you gotta, yeah. you got to make your own unique dude. Yeah. Uh, and you don't want to, like, you know, conform to society, uh, society standards. Sure. Uh, and so, uh, Malicious, um, was a hunter who I had no idea how to play hunter. And I'm sorry if you guys have no idea what WoW is and I'm just like going on and on. Um, tell me to shut up if you guys want and we, we can switch topics. Um, but, uh, World of Warcraft, um, he was geared completely wrong. Um, which, you know, sounds really nerdy now, but he was like wearing like like cloth armor, leather armor, mail armor all together, which doesn't give you any benefits. <laughs> and and he was using he was a hunter, so he should be using a ranged okay, thanks. Yeah, Cass. like an arrow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But instead he was using dual daggers. Um and it was it was just hilarious because he was so wrong in every way. But I, I spent and I probably spent like a year, two years trying to get him up to like level cap, which at the time was like eighty five. Yep. But I only got him to level fifty because I didn't do I didn't do quests. I just ran around doing killing you stuff, yeah. grinding. Um Wow, you just grinded. Yeah, pretty much. Explored and grinded. And I was the worst World of Warcraft player that's ever existed. Um I'm sure there've been worse. There are people with Oh you know You're right. Actual physical hold ups and Oh <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I get you. Yeah. Uh so you know <laughs> I was so bad. And then comes my, um, my, my, my seventh grade year. My, my, when I was in middle school, my second year in middle school, I got hit by a car. Um, have you told me about this? Yeah, probably. Uh, I got hit by a car riding my bike and I like shattered my leg, um, to the point where I was in a wheelchair for like a year. Um, but in that time I couldn't do sports anymore. I couldn't, like, you know, go anywhere. So I was basically confined to this wheelchair. Uh, and and my, my parents bought me a pity laptop um, because I had to, like, basically do, like, homeschool for my laptop. Um, so, and, and, um, and so I had this laptop, and I was like, okay, what am I going to do? So, of course, I installed World of Warcraft. Takes up probably the majority of the memory on the laptop. Um, but... For like a year straight, that's all I could do. So I got really into World of Warcraft my seventh grade year, and that's all I played. And <coughs> I got pretty good at the game, um, but I was never like hardcore right tier. And I think a big part of that was I was like, you know, twelve. Um, that factors in. That yeah. Factors in. So, so then after seventh grade and after I could you know like walk again, I kind of like stopped playing for a bit. Uh, and then in. Um, Oh, we uh, two days later. Uh, no, two days later. Not sorry, Ellen. Um, the um, where was I? Okay, yeah. So high school comes. I stopped playing World of Warcraft like all together because uh, Mists of Pandaria came out, and I was like, you didn't eh. like it. I, well, I do now. At the time, though, I thought it was just a little like lame. Um, thought they were trying to like profit off of the kung yeah, fu panda it, well it was like the same time too like yep. kung fu panda was like at its uh, height mm-hmm. so i was like you know i'll take a break i don't need to play this <coughs> and then i took a break until probably warlords came out which i think is actually right after mist so it wasn't that long of a break but it was long enough to be like well the younger you are the more that that time feels larger yeah 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 so so you know wow i i think i played wow i played wow hardcore for, like, probably from Wrath of the Lich King to Cataclysm. Like, that was when I was, like, logging in every day. Yeah. And, like, playing that game. And, I like, I had my guild friends and all that kind of stuff. And I ran a, I ran a World of Warcraft role-playing guild. Um, 
Really? Which was... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hilarious. A role-playing guild? Like, yeah. online? Yeah. Interesting. So... Oh, that's right. Where you protect... You, like... Yeah. You you act and talk like the characters. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, So, yeah. um... I never did that, but I had heard about it. And I'd been invited to that. When when I... I played WoW for, for five months, and that's yeah. it. Just five straight months. Five straight months. But they were probably some of, like, the saddest months of my life. Yeah. But, but WoW was, like, the one thing... That was like my see. That's kind of that non-depressed was, part of that it. That was wild that for me sense? in seventh grade, yeah. because I couldn't do anything that I loved. You know, like basically, I used to play football and baseball and stuff, but I couldn't do that anymore because I was, you know, like uh, I was wheelchair boy, um, and and so I, I dedicated my entire like existence to World of Warcraft for a bit, and I think some of that was really good, but I think some of that was also really bad because it kind of like shut me off, you know. Mm. Um. Anywho, um, I just got back into World of Warcraft because of the Battle of a- uh, Battle for Azeroth. Uh, Seems pretty cool. Cinematic, yeah. And they, you know what? That was one of my. So I never uh, watched Blizz- BlizzCon before. Yeah. And uh, a couple of my buds invited me to watch it with them on Saturday. So we're sitting down. BlizzCon's on this 4K TV. We're watching it, and uh, and one of the things they said was because we we saw the cinematic trailer for uh, um, Battle for Azeroth. Or... No, no the the cinematic trailer for classic for Overwatch. Oh yeah, like sure, the, sure, you know sure. what I mean. The yeah. and and you just kind of go okay. They don't have the time to make a bunch of cinematic uh, f- a bunch of cinematics for all, all, all these different games, games for BlizzCon. So yeah. you kind of expect one. Really, really good cool knockout one. cinematic. Right. So we got that cinematic with the really big armored dude who wields a hammer, a giant hammer Doom in Overwatch. Fi- or no, uh, Reinhardt. Reinhardt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, pl- play, I don't play either. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, so we saw it and that was awesome, right? So mm-hmm. I was like really cool. And then they go back to the main stage and they're like, we got something else special for you. Yeah. And they start it and I'm sitting there and we're like, is this another cinematic? What's going on? Did they make... Two cinematic, like it was like two cinematic. Yeah, we were so we we were kind of like yeah, like the, got real excited. That was fun. I'm not even into a lot of that stuff, but it's really fun hanging out with guys who. Are. Oh yeah, it's like it's the, like the passion the just rubs yeah, off. It's yeah, just, yeah, yeah, it's so cool. Yeah. Um. Well, man. Okay, so seeing Battle of Azeroth was amazing because it kind of brought me back to like the early wow i gotta stop the dog from barking yeah sure i can go get you want me to uh all you gotta do is shut the curtains Mm -hmm. and just grab that cork board that's right there and just put it on top of the curtain so she doesn't like open them up i shall return what she's doing is uh she's looking out the window seeing all like seeing yeah like people walking around or something like that and josh icons up i'll I'll return all righty so never seen again I can't, yeah, yeah, Jake's got, the dog eats him. Uh, so I can't see chat, so sorry guys. I uh, That's one of the reasons why I like having Jake here. Um, is I can just focus on this. While he chats with you. But I hope you're all having a wonderful uh, Friday or Saturday, depending on where in the world you live. Is that right? Is America always behind the other places? Are other countries literally just ahead of us in time? Is that why we're behind culturally? I don't know. That was more of a joke than serious. All right, Jake. I have no idea what chats I'm talking about. Okay. Flying blind over here, man. Just kidding. How'd how'd she she do? She was great. She trying to eat you. It's one of the nicest. I love her because she's big. And, oh, she's a big and, fluffball, and dude. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bam, I'm, I return shiny and chrome. Um. Okay. World of Warcraft. Battle of Azeroth. Blizzard always knocks it out of the park with cinematics. Oh, man. That's one of the things they're known for. Yeah. They're like, even though we can't really up the graphics of our most popular game. Right. We'll, we'll at least up the graphics of the videos we make for it. And... and I would pay serious buku bucks to watch, like, a World of Warcraft, you know, miniseries. Oh, my gosh. That was done in that cinematic style. Yeah. Well, and imagine how much pressure was on them graphically for the movie. Oh, yeah. 
Did you see so. the movie? I did. I, I liked here's it. Here's the deal. I enjoyed it. Like yeah. it wasn't like I I didn't I didn't watch it and go ooh. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like like I did when I watched just just this movie? last weekend. Uh, for a video game movie, it's fantastic. You know yeah. what I mean? Just 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 great. It's one of those movies that like I, I wouldn't mind owning it. I wouldn't I wouldn't mind watching it again. Partially because I enjoy the lore. Right. I enjoy the creatures and graphically it's really well done. Yeah. Like the 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 lead orc guy his. The way they did his face and expression, and they make it feel like it's part of the world with right. these real life people. I, I thought they did a very good job with that. I was. Really... I also liked how they kind of kept Wow style, you know. Yes. Because they could have just made it like with a the really... giant chunky armor yeah. and the like, yeah yeah yeah. You know, they could have real real worlded it. It was totally hard. like, mm-hmm. I'm really surprised that it happened. Truth be told, and that they did it the way they did, because I mean, it was a movie for the fans. It really was, yeah. But yeah. I don't think it would have ever even, you know, come close to achieving actual, um, you know, su- like, mainstream success, you know, because of the art style. Uh, and and it, it's it was a love letter to World of Warcraft, and that was really fun. Or Warcraft in general, I should say. Yeah, and you can only hope that it was successful enough that they get a... Keep I wouldn't ex- mind a sequel, ex- yeah. Explore, not, not even a sequel, but just keep exploring the... Cinematic world. Oh, they can do a lot. That, you know yeah. what I mean? The... Uh, Edric Snow needs some suggestions on other good D&D-esque fantasy movies series. What have you seen? Uh, give us a give us a platform. Oh, can I please, can I gush for a minute? Yeah. Um, I know that books aren't all the rave right now for some people, depending on what generation you're, ah. you're in, fantasy. But uh, I am in the last three hours of the 14th book. I'm, it's an, I'm listening mm-hmm. audio form in the Wheel of Time series by Robert oh, Jordan. Gosh. And uh, it is legitimately making an impact on me. Yeah? Like, like, yeah, where I'm actually like, like I could get emotional talking about it, but like the, it, it it's hard because I know that most people won't jump into a series that's 14 books long. Right. You know what I mean? That's a hard decision to make because you're like, I'm never going to finish it or you know i've been going through these books for over a year yeah and i stopped uh, a couple times to listen to ready player one and a couple other books you know what i mean so so like the it's it's been a long journey going through them and not all of the books are as good as the others you know what right. i mean book nine and ten were rough like those are hard to get through <laughs> but uh but 11 draws you right back and the and the story behind the books is just about as engaging as the books themselves do you know the story behind the books? Uh, yeah, it's like a farce, right? Almost, or it starts off as one. No, 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 no. 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 Or am no, I no, thinking no. of? You're thinking of something else. Okay. This is real life, the real life story behind the books. Oh no! Robert Jordan gets sick, and he knows he's gonna die, so he just starts feverishly writing notes for the rest of the series. So he dies after book eleven. Okay. After he writes book eleven. Right, and then his daughter takes over. Mm-mm. No, okay. Nope. Even crazier. So, uh, he, um, he, he passes away intending for there to be one more book. Right. Book 12 is supposed to be the final book. And, uh, he intended for it to be the biggest book he ever wrote. Like over 200,000 words. Wow. And, uh, um, and they didn't announce what they, what they were going to do with the book, what was going to happen with it. And, uh, his wife, who was also his editor, mm-hmm. right? Imagine that kind of power team. Yeah. So, uh, by the way, Wheel of Time, most prolific fantasy book series since Lord of the Rings. So, just to put that out mm-hmm. there. And um, the he passes away, and everyone's like, what's going to happen to the series? But uh, one young author uh, in his early 20s wow. sends a letter. To, or writes an email or a message or something to, or he writes a blog. I don't know all the details. Yeah. Uh, about how much uh, the Wheel of Time series impacted his life. Yeah. Right? So if he's he's tw- early 20s then, and the later books were coming out every other year. I think the first like five or six were coming out every year. So that would have been preteen all the way into his adulthood. Yeah. He was following this series. Like, it, that's a part of your of your your own human growth at that right. point, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, and so he writes this beautiful 
letter about how how much the like Robert will be missed. You know what I mean? And how mm-hmm. much of an impact the book's made on his life. Robert Jordan's widow reads it. Mm. She looks up the kid. He's got like one well-published book. But he's not like... It's like he's as low on the publishing right, total pole as you, as you can, can get. Yeah. And, uh, and she decides, I want you to write the book. Holy crap! So has him come over to their cabin. They have over three million words of notes that Jordan has written. Just like for on the, the final book. Oh. Yeah. And so he he sets out. So then he sits there for months, just combing over the notes, reading the notes, going through them. And uh um and they decide, the publisher and and uh and uh, Robert's widow and the and this new young guy, that uh that they're gonna break up the book because it's too big. Right. For for one book. Right. So they break it into three. So audio audiobook timeline wise all three of the last books, 12, 13, 14, are like about 40 hours long. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, and okay, we joke, we joke on stream all the time about the longer you push something off. Right. The bigger the payoff needs to be. Right. Book 14 is nothing but the last battle for the survival of the world. The whole book, 40 hours worth of literature, is nothing... But the the war to save humanity like f- from the darkness, and I'm and so like I'm in the last three hours, and I'm blown away. This has been some of the most satisfying, like partaking of a book that I have ever had. When did book fourteen come out? Uh, two thousand nine, I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, it it says it's not that long ago. You know what yeah. I mean? That's like that's less that's less than a decade, and uh, yeah, man. It seriously like it's it's blown me away and it's not over yet, um, but it's like, yeah, dude, yeah, I I really I, I don't want to say too much. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. sincerely in my heart of hearts, I hope that everybody who loves fantasy literature will at one point in their in their partaking of the genre, go through those fourteen books, because I think it's incredibly worth it. So that's it. I just had to gush for a little bit. That book has seriously, those, those, that series has wrecked me, has taught me things, has shown me things in myself. It's incredibly good. Highly recommended. Gorilla with a brush is saying that Sanderson, who I'm guessing is the yes, new Yes, Brandon author, Sanderson. Brandon yeah, Sanderson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, said that the first thing he did was ask if he could read the ending because Jordan <laughs> uh, supposedly actually wrote the very end himself. He did. He Sanderson did. disappeared into Jordan's office and emerged hours later in shocked awe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, imagine that. Oh wow, book fourteen was only twenty thirteen. Oh really? Okay, yeah, so that's so... that's that's closer than I thought. Thanks, the walrus. Yeah, thanks, guys. Um, uh, for real though, is like, Wheel of Time? It's the amazing. one where it's like on the back of elephant. Like the no. world is. What's that book? I um, don't know. Chad, if you could help me out, I think it's actually. I think it's like a. Um... Sorry for pausing painting for a little bit. That oh was yeah, bad. we got. We well, we have to rant about what we love, man. Um. It's it's a it's like almost like a a farce of um you know like fantasy literature, uh but it's also like a really good read and I'm still in focus and all that. Yes, good. I'm just trying to. Th- I can't remember what the book is actually called. Um, it's like the two like the world is like balancing on the back of like two elephants on a turtle or something like that, which sounds ridiculous. Uh, and I I need to find it. Um. You also might just need to give chat time to catch up. They might know what you're talking about. Discworld! Discworld, the walrus, Terry Pratchett! You're right. Thank you so much. That's exactly what I was thinking of. Terry Pratchett. Um. Uh. Let's see. Gorilla with a brush. For people who love D&D and are looking for books that aren't actually set in the D&D universe, Joe Abercrombie's First Law Trilogy is one of my favorites ever. Sounds okay. cool. All right. Joe Abercrombie. That's that name sounds familiar. I'm adding that to the list. Uh, Discworld. Gorilla. Yes. Ooh, we're working on the shield. Yeah, right, so I'm gonna need some book recommendations after. After I'm done with this series, although I I might take a break from fantasy for a little bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Fourteen books of just sheer. Fantasy goodness. I think you know I, I'm considering. Um, also, your book is on my backlog. I promise you. Oh, dude, no worries. Um, no worries. Uh, I just may ask for it back at some point because please. I, that's 
that that's my favorite book to read. You know, knowing me, I I I like having like a collection of books. So if you ever need that book back, hit me up, and and I'll probably just buy a copy of my own. Okay. Um. Well, uh, but I'm thinking, I yeah, like I think I might actually take a look at some of the new Star Wars novels. Mm-hmm. Um, because Star Wars right now is doing their whole new like the new canon. Yep. Um, and I think that might be kind of cool. Yeah, it, I, it definitely is. There's already stuff in the novels that you're not going to get in the movie. Right. Hints as to Ray's heritage and. Well, I don't know if you've like ever read one of those Star Wars novels of like the movie, the novelizations. Uh, I went through a good chunk of the Episode Seven book. Okay. But I, I got a little bored, so I um, so I stopped. I would recommend reading the Episode Three novelization. Uh, so Revenge of the Sith. Uh, novelization it completely well not completely fixes any issues i have with the movie but it makes some of the weirder stuff a lot makes it make more sense yeah so like um you know spoilers for episode three uh but you know that movie's been out since like what 2005 uh if that um so you know it's also it's it's a prequels trilogy yeah it's the prequels um so the scene where kit fisto mace windu uh, and the other two dudes, who I know the names of, but I just can't think of them right now. Uh, when they go and confront Emperor Palpatine. Yeah. So that little Jedi strike force. And in the movies, it's like a five second little scene where Emperor Palpatine does his whole little like spin trick. Because spinning's a cool trick. And um, It is a cool trick. It's don't a you, cool don't you, trick! Don't you make jokes. Um, and he, he cuts down all these master Jedi in like ten seconds. Mm-hmm. Um, Brutal, man. It was really real, lame. Real brutal. It was really lame. Because... Was it lame? Yes, it was. Are you kidding me? These guys, Kit Fisto, should be able to defend himself. Nah, man. Longer nah. than like, you know, nah, 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 two point nah, 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 five nah. seconds. Okay? No, 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 no. They're... Here's the deal. The Emperor's on a whole different level than those yeah, guys. Yeah, but he's also you they know they are they are the 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 champ. Like he is just cutting them away. The the real the real challenge was always between Mace Windu. And okay. the Emperor. So okay. go and keep saying what you're saying, but I'm just first off, I Kid Fisto to... is the coolest Jedi. Um, Doesn't mean he's the best. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, you know, Josh. Um, <laughs> game over, man. Uh, friendship <laughs> over. Um, <laughs> Kid just... Fisto is the one thing I care about in this world, dude. I love Kid Fisto. Good. He's awesome. But I'm not gonna overestimate his skills just because I like him or he's Uh, famous. you know what? You obviously don't understand how Star Wars fandom works because. <laughs> Um, you abandon all logic for the things you exactly. love. Exactly. That's the the stormtrooper. The, the note of the a true st- fan. The stormtrooper who goes, um, um, okay, carry on. Uh, after Obi Wan does his little mind trick, has three pages of a Wikipedia page, like uh, on the Star Wars wiki. <laughs> three like entire like he has an entire backstory. The okay, can't move can move along. So Kit Fisto. Is super cool, and he has he like super cool. eight pages. So no, he's awesome. I dude, I love Kip Fisto, mm-hmm, man. Josh, I, no, I get it, man. He got beat by a man whose name is Sheev. Sheev Palpatine. Okay, Palpatine was BA though, dude. You you can't. His name was Sheev. Like he, the the fact that he took them down so fast is 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 partially to show how just a wide right. difference of you right skill they they had. I'm just saying. They could have made a really cool lightsaber fight and still have, like, Sheev, like, kick him butt. One of the hardest things to accept is when a hero character dies unconsequentially. You're right. That is one of the hardest things to accept. And in the last book of The Wheel of Time, (laughs) that happens left and right. Really? It feels like I'm getting punched in the heart. Oh, that's awesome. Again and again and again. Um, Yeah. No, I, I, I I am all too aware that, you know, murdering off characters is the best way to make... You know, I, I'm, A Song of Ice and Fire is my favorite, you know. Uh, oh, yeah, he's one got of my that down universe. in our form. Um, George R. R. Martin will just kill a character for, like... Kicks and giggles. Yeah. Um, so, I, I'm, all, I'm all too familiar with that. Um, but, in the books, uh, the novelization of Episode 3, the entire lightsaber duel is expanded... Uh, but it, it still shows that Sheev, because uh, I'm not going to call him the Emperor, because his name is Sheev, 
um, is on his own level, uh, like above the Jedi. Uh, but but there's still like this really cool like you can read like um, you know you can see like the other like the Jedi like sweating and like and like they, they they're having a really tough time yeah, just yeah, taking yeah, yeah. on this old man yeah um, and it's 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 actually really well done and and you read it and you at the end you feel satisfied that they lost mm, mm. Um, you understand why they lost right 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 uh, while in the movie it just felt like he turned into like a, you know like this he, he just screeched and zip, 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 yeah three of them are dead yeah and yeah. you're like oh that was cool yeah but but at the same time it they it just didn't really felt like they mattered yeah um, while in this you know every time a Jedi falls you get like this whole like you know like these are like these these four people are friends. And, and so, like, you know... Right, you, you feel it. You yeah, feel it you a lot feel more. it much more. Mm -hmm. I dig that. I want a first name basis with the Emperor. Sheev, uh, as as his friends call him. Oh, Papa Palpatine. Um, like, hey, Sheev, you wanna go to the local Blockbuster? Oh, hey, Sheev. You get a pizza? <laughs> blockbuster pizza? <laughs> I remember when I, when I became... <coughs> when I became too old... To hang out at a blockbuster. Yeah? yeah. 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 Oh man. That was a that was a a poignant note for me in my in my growing up was just realizing I don't. Uh, eh, what am I doing here? This isn't, <laughs> this isn't fun for me anymore. Like the I don't want to just look at movies and talk to people for an hour. Like I I'm here to grab a movie and leave. But I'm with a bunch of young adults that all they want to do is chat, hang walk out. through the aisles, laugh at movie covers, and flirt with each other. And I'm like. Oh man! Yeah, I gotta go, guys. Sorry, this is the worst. I gotta go watch this movie. <laughs> like, like, I gotta go do anything better with my time. Like, this is the worst. So um, that was a that was a I've I've grown kind of moment for me. Man, I miss Blockbuster. Uh, I don't. What do you? They threatened to sue me. Why would Blockbuster threaten to sue you? Because they were running out of money, and I had kept a film for over thirty days. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm dead serious. They said, "We're unless you bring your movie back, we're going to get lawyers involved. <laughs> and then you were just like, okay. I'm like, I'm like, seriously? Dude, what was the movie? Oh, probably something dumb. This was like, this was like 2010. I hope it was like. And it was old. I don't, like cheaper I don't by the dozen four. <laughs> Is, or, you know, like. Oh, man. I don't think it was anything that bad. It was probably some cheap fantasy flick, like, in the name of the king or something like that. You oh, know what I mean? Man. So. We're gonna get lawyers involved. That's hilarious. Yeah, I can't. I seriously was like, I was like, are you kidding me? You guys serious about this here? That so, yeah, that is a sign of. Uh, that's like they're circling the drain. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, like yeah. all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're on your last leg. I remember, there. Blockbuster was where I used to go get my video games, mm -hmm. because I could go in and I could rent rated T games mm -hmm. and say that my mom was out in the car. And that she was cool with me getting this. <laughs> and the guy at Blockbuster, whose name was Wolfie, I'll wow. never forget Wolfie. Good old Wolfie. Was just like, okay, cool. And he would just check it out to me. And then I would walk out with my rated T video game feeling like I had just like... You just conquered. Yeah. Yeah. Um, man, Blockbuster. Uh, the last Blockbuster, I think, just went out of business. Or no, it's still alive, but it's, it's going out of business in uh, Alaska. Wow. So, like, there's only one blockbuster left, I think, and, and and this is information from Reddit. So, if it's wrong, forgive me. But uh, but but it just services those who are living out in the like the fringes of Alaska, um, <laughs> the fringes of society, right? The people who are running from the law. The, those are the only people who now use blockbuster. Um, this is the cheap man's re 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 like setting my palate. I don't I don't want to go through the time of. Having to actually like cut off another square of parchment paper. You're a reuse, re, re, reduce, reuse, recycle. Thank you. Yeah, man. Reduce. That's the word. Um, blockbuster. I remember I would rent like the same game, like every other day. <laughs> I never rented games. Really? Yeah, yeah. I always did movies there, and I had a, I was lucky because that blockbuster was next to a, uh, a red box. You know what that means? Oh. That means double the movies. That means any any time uh, any time a movie is not a is not new, you could rent it for one dollar. Ooh. So if it wasn't one of the new releases, one dollar rental. You got the. Yeah, because they had to compete. That was that was another sign of like the end of 
of like, Blockbuster was like the end of days. That like that yeah. So I'd be at a Blockbuster near my house, my my apartment really, and I would be able to rent a movie for a buck, right? Yeah. I go to a Blockbuster near my folks' house. And it was four bucks to rent a movie. Ooh. You know what I mean? It was like, because they didn't have a red box nearby. So it was it was very like... Blockbuster, you cheeky boy. Yeah. They did it just to compete, which is sad. Like, that that's when you're like... When you're competing with a robot. Yeah. You know, that, that's the well, side of the times. Here's, okay, here's the deal. And this is true with any creative endeavor any of you guys ever have. The minute you stop... Um, you stop being a pioneer you stop reinventing right. things you stop looking from things in a new perspective it you you're following trends now you're not setting any and so you're not really doing anything doing i want to get unique. i want to get the numbers right here but i remember that blockbuster was actually netflix um basically was like you can buy us for um they offered themselves to blockbuster yes whoa and blockbuster laughed them out of their yeah because they never thought okay blockbuster ceo passed up chance to buy netflix for 50 million dollars it's like billions now yeah that's like oh my gosh they're making 50 million dollar movies on netflix now like isn't that incredible (laughs) is that i mean granted at the time netflix was you know failing pretty heavily uh because you had a bunch of people who didn't you know who like is that when they were kind of split still? They were still trying to... They like, were still doing DVDs, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and the streaming was very... Not um, great yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, uh, you know, what what happened is Netflix... La- or uh, Blockbuster laughed them out, and then Netflix realized that, like, if they weren't going to... You know, if they, if they needed to do something that set them apart from Blockbuster, and that's when the streaming really came into play. Mm-hmm. And then Block- Blockbuster tried to do their own streaming service... Um, yeah, exactly, Mr. Heath. I imagine that if Blockbuster had bought Netflix, they never would have done streaming. And and then just another company would have came in and done the... Dude, and Netflix has set so many trends. Yeah. Like the, the creating original content, the streaming, the... Um, do you know they were one of the first companies, if not the first company, to introduce uh, um, unlimited vacation time for full-time employees? That's incredible. Yeah. And now it's like every... You know, Silicon Valley company, with their head on their shoulders, is doing the exact it's, same yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever seen the TV show Silicon Valley? Oh yeah, it's so good. That's like all these like fantastic comedians coming mm-hmm. together for one show. It's fantastic. Um, love it. I'd love that show. Uh, I would talk about hindsight. It's crazy to me that a building next to the Walmart has been replaced by two little boxes right outside. Yeah, that, isn't that incredible? Is that like? An entire blockbuster, and it's probably selection of like thousands of movies. Dude, just think about like how much, how much space was being wasted. Right. When you've got pretty much as many movies as are needed in a red box, that takes up hardly the space. Oh, and then also the employees and that kind of stuff. Yeah, man. You know, yeah. uh, the um, talking truth right there. The blockbuster right next to my house was actually just, like, th- their entire building was vacant for, like, I would say until it closed, until just probably last month. Um, and so, you know, that's been, like, five, six years. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just got replaced with a Cricket Wireless um, <laughs> mobile depot. And I was like, sign of the times. Sign of the times. Sign of the times. Hmm. So here's what I'm wondering is I want it to be, I don't want it to be like pure gray. Yeah. I want it to have some kind of like a uh, shade to it. I don't want, so that's why I'm, I'm using pallid witch flesh instead of white scar. Cool. I want it to have some kind of, but I think I'm just going to offset it with white and black instead of trying to find some other shades that will complement it. Cool. 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 Okay. Um, what time are we going to today? Uh, like, like four cool. ten maybe cool, cool, four four oh five. Where are we at right now? Uh, three oh two. Okay. So thanks for hanging out, everybody. Yeah, uh, Cass wants to know if you've read the Poisonwood Bible. The Poisonwood Bible. Is that what she said? Yeah. No. What's that about, Cass? Do you want to give us a dear man synopsis? <laughs> oh jeez. 
Don't give us a deer man synopsis because we only have an hour right now. We oh, don't... I'm all for the deer man. <laughs> I'm still team deer man. That's like so. Okay, so I've, I'm 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 posting streams to the to to the YouTube YouTube mm -hmm. forward slash Joshua the hippie, but uh, but it would be kind of fun to grab some of my favorite moments and just make, make like them a compilation. No, no, no. Just like like this moment happened. It was five minutes long, but just have little highlights. You oh, know yeah, what I mean? Sure. Like you can watch the whole thing if you want, but here's like a little highlight. Oh yeah, might be a good idea because because that moment was hilarious. Oh yeah. Well, the best part was you thought we were making fun of Cass's stuff. I did, so I was being super reserved. And so yeah, I like me and Cass. Kelsey were over really... here freaking out. Yeah, and I think you guys are being super rude. And like, then you were like, you know what though? Here's what I was doing. I was trying to follow the story. I was trying to oh, understand yeah. what what he was talking about. Oh, gosh. It was classic. I don't know if anybody clipped that moment or not, but that was a good moment. Is Columbia Record House still a thing? I've never heard of it, uh, but I'm also a filthy millennial, so... <laughs> okay, question for you. Yeah. When are young adults going to stop being millennials? I don't think I'm a millennial anymore. Young adults have been millennials for uh, maybe 20, 30 years. Yeah, I don't like really the... think I'm really a millennial. So... Um, but I think it's just a funny now, okay, thing to say. The term millennial has not existed for 20 years. Right. But, like, the age gap right. at which someone is called a millennial is seriously from, like, 10 to 35. Well, what's the, what, like, what classifies you as a millennial? Like, living in... Not being a X or a Y or a Z or right. a boomer. So, like, but, like, what? what's the time gap there? So, like... <laughs> <laughs> not being any of these things oh <laughs> that's it like there's no there's no real and the term uh millennial was uh, it's been kind of reappropriated but it was originally just basically meant as a way to talk about right people in a certain age range um see i don't i don't know if i am a millennial because you, you probably are the you're a millennial on some level. What makes you think you're not a millennial? Well, because I was not. I'm. I was born in '97, right? Mm -hmm. And so I guess I might fall into like the. Um, I guess I might fall. Do you into... think millennials are older than you or younger than you? Yeah, older. Okay. Okay. Because uh, I think like twenty. I think okay. So yeah, I think I like fit in 30. the. I, I fit into the millennial. I'm right in the middle, so there's no way I can't be a millennial. Right. Because I got people that are like. Five years older than me who think they're millennials, and I got right. people five years younger than me that think they're millennials. So. Um, I feel like I'm part of like the new gym, whatever that is. Okay. Um, because I, because I, I, the way I see millennials is that they were the people who were, uh, kids in the '90s who who can remember, uh, 9/11. Yeah, I remember when I was in school. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I feel like that. I think that that because uh, you know, 9/11 is what really changed this country, tremendously, and so I feel like. Um, millennials are people who remember what life was like pre 9 11 yeah and and now are living in the post 9 11 world but i but i think that they're also like the um the kids who like they culture, grew up with a cell phone right culture wise grew up without you know uh, technology being at their fingertips and with technology starting to come into yeah. um the forefront but then also like culturally they're the ones who are watching like early Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, that kind of stuff. So there, I think that, you know, like, you know, like, Ren and Stimpy and stuff, did you ever, like, watch Cartoon Network in the mm -hmm. early? Mm -hmm. So, like, I never did. Yeah. And so culturally, I don't know if I fall into that, like, um, okay, so Google says the date range is 1981 to 1996, which I think makes sense. So um, you're right after that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, that does make sense. Here, you know what? You know what's, uh, you know what I think is really interesting. Hmm. I think your generation and the generation after you are going to most resemble in their worldview the uh, the generation, the the children of the the Great Depression. Oh yeah. I think you're incredibly grounded in reality and. Your thoughts of what you can do are, are far less fantastical than my generation, who grew up on the juice of you can do anything you want. Right. And a, call, and a, and a and, and de degree means a career. Right. 
Um, so a lot of my generation got their, their bubble bursted with that, where they thought, you know, I can do whatever I want, or uh, I can, you know, a degree will equal a job. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is Americans, by the way. I, I can't really speak for any other country, but um, I don't even know if I can speak for Americans. <laughs> but that that's my general... You're an American. My you qualify. Gen- general perspective is that the... Is that, you know... No, I would agree. My, my parents' generation, a degree did mean a job. It did mean that you well, were going to... <coughs> It was like my mom was able to work part-time job and still go to UNL. Mm-hmm. You know, like mm-hmm. she was able to like afford most of her tuition through working at Dairy Queen. You know? Yeah. It's just not really like it's not really a thing that that's not even remotely uh possible today. Mm-hmm. You know? Um it's 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 weird, dude. It's it's the times are a changing uh, and they're they're a ch- they're they're a changing pretty quickly. Is that Bob Dylan. Yeah. Bob Dylan. Uh, you know, I just and oh oh look what we got, Golden Tiger is following. Welcome aboard, dude. Hey, hey glad thanks, to have man. you here. Welcome to the stream. The Swiss millennials go from 1981 to 1983, 1985 to 1989, and 1993 to 1995. It has some holes, but um, <laughs> do you get it? Like Swiss cheese. Yeah, because that was the joke from earlier. <laughs> oh, Gorilla with a brush. A plus, dude. Uh, that was Gorilla with a brush? Oh, uh, yeah. I That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? I just, I didn't get it at first. And so I was like, I was trying to have a very like, oh, that's so inter. Why, why is there these date ranges? <laughs> and then I got to the. What's the, what's the joke <laughs> with the date ranges? 1981 to 1983, 1985 to 1989, and 1993 to 1995. It has some holes. And then I got to that, and then I saw the Padum Chag callback, and it hit me, uh, and it, I thought it was hilarious. Um, Golda, Golden Taiga, uh, hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, welcome. Yes, thank you. I like your little emoji, dude. Uh, he looks fun. Um, a tuition was about the cost of a new car, and not in the uh, not, and now it is the cost of a house. Yeah, it's incredible. That's why I, you know, I'm going to community college right now, because I realize I can pay for community college with my job right now. Yep. Uh, I can, I can, I, I, I'm like, you know, no debt right now. Um, and I, I, you know, I've already gotten a lot of my gen eds out of the way, so it's like, I, I, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. Um, but I, like my friend, like a couple of my friends who just went straight to UNL or, you know, went to a straight to a four year, like they, they are already so far into debt. Yeah. Uh, it's like, it's terrifying. Um, okay. So, uh, I'm a videographer for a living, mm-hmm. right? And, uh, and I learned my craft working, working with, I, I apprenticed under a guy who knew what he was doing. Mm-hmm. Um, I never went to school for videography. In fact, I, I don't have a degree. Yeah, I um, I did school for a couple years, but nothing substantial enough to really equate to anything worth noting. Um, but in my field, people are far more interested in can you do this thing I want you to do? Yeah. Than, um, what's your degree? You know what I mean? Or what 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 education system were you a part of? Uh, and the sad thing is, is I've actually had quite a few. Uh, graduates from UNL come to me yeah asking me how to do stuff asking me how to use certain equipment because their gear wasn't uh, really up to date and their software wasn't up to date now I have heard they have updated a lot of that stuff UNL UNL right now Johnny Carson their, been their, really new, their new media yeah school yeah. Um, um, yeah John my, well my, my my good friend Ethan right now is uh, Gosh, I don't know exactly what he's doing, uh, but he's at Johnny Carson, and they've just updated all of their stuff. Good. Johnny Carson's like our uh, media center at UNL, uh, for those who have no idea what we're talking Because that's, that's the hardest thing, man, when you're graduating, and the only stuff you learned is already... Out of date? Out of date. Yeah. You're kind of, you're in a, you're in a tough spot competing with other people. Well, that's... You know, I think trade school... Right now, America is Dude, running... come on, out. trade school. Yeah. Trade school. Like... Um, America is running out of plumbers, electricians, engineers, uh, engineers. Exactly. 
Uh, and so right now, you know, like I, I was considering my, my grandpa was a plumber and he was like a millionaire by the time he died. Um, and so I was like really considering, you know, going into plumbing or just, you know, picking up a trade right now Mm -hmm. because they're needed. You know, you can go really far, really quickly. Um, if you go into like, uh, electrician or, or plumbing or something like that. Um, and then I was like, well, you know what, let's, let's study history instead. Because, you know, there's always time. It all goes back to the Free to Be Me and You campaign from 1970s. Told kids they can be anything and everything, which is a lie. Well, I'm still... You know what? It's not a lie. It's not a lie. The context needs to change. Right. When you say you can be anything and everything, it shouldn't be about what job you have or career you hold. It right. should be about who you are as a person. Right. That, you know what I mean? And what you're willing to do like, to achieve those well, goals. Well, and, and, and to me, we've gotten way too focused on what's my job and that being my defining feature. Right. It used to be your job was just the thing you did to provide for your family. Right. You know what I mean? To have a stable uh, life. Well, hobbies are getting... And who you were yeah. was your, the, the, your part in the family and your, right. and your contribution to your community. You know what I mean? That kind of stuff. Not to sound like a old dude sitting on his no, rock, rocker you're not wrong though yeah we're, we're just we're fa- i think in the next 10 years we're going to be facing a really interesting time and i honestly i think we well and this is this is me you know really sounding like a, a dummy but um i think right now with with net neutrality and that kind of stuff Ugh. and you brought up um you know like the great like you know my generation being kind of the great depression you know, kids. Well, you're, the the economy is cl- closer to the Great Depression than any economy in, in American history since right. since then. Well, and what I think if net, you know, and I don't want to get political, so I'm, I'm not going to go, but I think if net neutrality, you know, happens and if and if, and if which, it dies, right? So you're talking. We're about. Gonna, I think we're going to hit a point because net neutrality is imperative for small businesses. It really is. It really um, is. Yeah. And so the minute that something like that happens, I, I honestly think that we're looking at a, um, we're going to be looking at kind of like just a, a collapse. And I don't think it'll be fast though. No. It'll go slow. But they're, they're not gonna. They're not gonna like kill net neutrality in like a uh, in one fell swoop. Right. They're gonna do it slowly over time. We're not. We're not. We're not becoming the imp- in the empire here. You yeah. know. Yeah. 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 Uh, but. Uh, but yeah, but I think that's almost even scarier. Oh, it is. Know? Yeah, because it's like, because with time they can even they can shoehorn more things in. Yep. You know. Yep. And and they can avoid uh, the public eye a lot better. Right. You know that's the that's the deal. They'll wait. They'll wait till people aren't, you know, causing such a ruckus. Golden Tiger has a great point. At some point, who you are got replaced by what you do. Yes. Um, and it, those are two totally different things. Like, right. for real, they are. That's why the whole, yeah, man, you like people who are pursuing the, um, pursuing a st- the stream life right. or pursuing YouTube career or pursuing creative content creation as a career, a lot of them are seeking it because they've already decided that's who I am. Right. I am a creative content creator. That's why I define myself, but you gotta back up. Like right. you're you're already like five steps off. You know what I mean? Of like where uh, emotional stability lies. You know right. what I mean? The uh, like like the the two things that I think are incredibly important are um, are uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, understanding yourself, self awareness. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Get, lear- learning who you are and how to lead yourself in life, and then kicking your butt then <laughs> like the hustle you know what i mean like those those things are incredible if if yeah. you know what i mean but Do the you, hustle. you gotta you gotta love the journey man you can't you can't love the destination well that's kind of like what i realized it was like i'm going into a field that's pretty tiny mm-hmm. uh but at the same time it's something that i care deeply about you know yeah and so and i realized you know i i'm gonna have more fun being poor and happy than, you know, rich and lousy, you know? <laughs> so it's like, and and also, I'm not really the kind of guy who wants to go be, like, you know, an engineer or something like that. Yeah. 
I, w- I would much rather, you know, do history and, 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 and the Which arts awesome. and that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think I think a lot more people need to do that. I think a lot more people need to just kind of take a step back and do what they want to do instead of what... Yeah, um, And but don't, don't lock in the destination. That's, right. that's my thing is, like, don't, don't go... Once I'm there, I'll be happy. Once I have this career, I'll be happy. Once I've, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, love the journey. Love what you're learning and love what you're getting to explore. Right. And if it lands you someplace where you can end s- stably, you know what I mean, doing something you love, then, but even then, that r- that rich and unhappy thing, yeah. that happens when you're, you, you get to the destination, you realize, wow, this destination isn't what makes me happy, you know? Yeah. <laughs> this is like, it's a totally different thing, so... Anyway, that's that's a bit of a soapbox for me. I'm also part of a leadership college at the at the church I work at, so I'm I'm kind of hmm. I, I'm kind of partial to young adults trying to figure things out. Let's see. Reading a bunch of getting oh gorilla brush, you're gone probably already, but uh, thank you for hanging out. Uh, it was great. We'll see you, and uh, we hope to see you again. Yeah. Uh, even though you're already gone. Um, yeah, sorry for turning the stream into a giant soapbox. No, that's what we do, though, sometimes. <laughs> um, so I've gone right into my... Mate. That's awesome, Ellen. I'm incredibly jealous. My, um, I did AP courses and stuff in high school, which actually really put me ahead of the curve. But um, math was never really my thing. So right now I'm taking, like, three math courses just to get all my math gen eds out of the way. Um... It all goes back to the right, 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 right. Who you are? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, shadow taxes makes a very terrifying point. Um, J- Josh and Jake, you assume the internet will not be replaced. Ooh, huh? Like I, I couldn't imagine a world where the internet's been replaced. What's he talking about? But well, no, it's like you know the internet right now. If net neutrality or something like that goes through, what's to stop somebody from creating a new thing? Because it's weird to think that the internet, to us, is kind of the final form, you know? But is yeah. there anything beyond that? Um, you know? I mean, I can't I can't fathom it. See, isn't that weird? But I'm sure somebody out there has. Well, uh, we never fathomed the internet, you know right. what I mean? So, um, so like, who knows? It's a, it's a yeah. great point. Yeah. Um, yeah, Cass, Ellen, artists, dude. I respect artists so much. I wish I could be an artist. You know, I used to do art as a kid, and I actually used to be, I don't want to say really good, I used to be pretty good, um, and it was such a cool relief for me, um, but then, you know, I, I was like, I got too busy with sports and stuff, and I, I became a bit of a meathead, and then... You were an athlete. I was. Very odd, though. It was like a, it, it was like an odd, I was like an odd athlete, because I was the athlete who was like, at school was like, um who was still kind of like nerdy you know and like i i, I would I, I was never the athlete who hang out who hung out with like the other athlete kids i was kind of like the, the weird odd man out all the time um which i was fine with um i well i know everyone can do art but i and but i need to find like my my i need to find the art that i like that resonates with me now you know mm. um and to an extent, I and uh, I consider like D and D and that kind of stuff an art. Oh, storytelling, man! Yeah, that's absolutely um, not guaranteed. And, and so I don't know if I'll ever go back to you know painting um, or drawing, but I think I found like an art form that kind of fits me right, um, or writing in general, I guess. Um, Rack. Bro. No, let's do this. Golden Tiger math is gross. Ugh. I uh on Monday I, I told you guys that I was studying for my finals, and I'm currently like, I I I'm taking my three math courses, a soci, and then a writing class, and my social and writing are great. I already have all my papers done. I already have like everything ready to go, because that's where I mean that's where I excel. Um, but then my math courses. I'm studying for, like, three separate math finals, and it is literally draining me of life and spirit. Um, but it's, it's, rough, it's, it's so close to an end. And then Christmas is here, 
and then I only have one more math class, and then I'm, like, basically done with math for the rest of my life. Um, so, we're, Sounds we're, good. we're close. Um, if I got this in the shot, I just brought yeah, it. Yeah, there he goes. Still in focus? Uh, yes, you are now. Okay. I used to be really good at math. Um, and then, you know, going back to, like, when I was hit by that car... Um, I basically missed an entire year of, of early math, um, which was really bad because math builds on itself. It does. Uh, so if you miss, you know, that's why, like, they always say, like, you know, the only reason I, I would go to, like, this is going to sound stupid, but, but like, um, the only class that I was ever really terrified of missing in high school was math. Because I knew that I would actually have to, like, go in after school or something to actually, like, um, you know, learn what I missed. Mm-hmm. And, and, but every other class I always knew that I could get caught up somehow. You know, because, like, just, it, it's almost like common knowledge. Math is the one thing um, where common knowledge just doesn't really apply, especially for some of the weirder stuff. Let's see chat oh i know that math is everywhere shadow taxes but i'm saying i i'll never have to do like you know hardcore math again i'll never have to do you know yeah like like math is everywhere but formulas and equations are right like the the like i understand why i'm doing it but interpretation i don't of it. really care about you know math <laughs> let's see when's your finals week uh i'm coming up on it i think i have like a week or two uh I have a really relaxed schedule, so I'm only at class three days a week, um, which has been awesome. Uh, granted, I'm there for like five, six hours. Let's see. Yeah, the 18th uh, through the 22nd is my finals week, uh, which is fine, because then I get out. I think I'm actually out on the 21st. Um so then I still have, you know, I have Friday off. And then I go back in, like, mid-January. Oh, yeah, Cass, I was hit by a car. We talked about that earlier. But uh, when I was in seventh grade, I got smoked on my way to school on my bike. Um, and I, I, like, shattered my leg. Uh, and I was, like, in a wheelchair for a really long time. So do you do you are, are do you still kind of have like the eyes of someone in a wheelchair where like when, <laughs> when you walk in somewhere you notice whether or not it's accessible or not? Um, I guess kinda, uh, which is funny to say, because um, I, I guess yeah you know to an uh, to an extent I also realized that and maybe this is like because I'm lazy, but I, I've noticed that um. I, I take I take like the handicap path, which is, that's the st <laughs> I'll take like the ramps and stuff instead of taking the stairs. Sometimes I'll like walk up the ramps, Interesting. Uh, and my friends will look at me like, "What are you like?" And I maybe that's just me being like a weirdo, and maybe it has nothing to do with that. <laughs> um, honestly, I hope it is just me being a weirdo. Um, it's more interesting that way. Yeah. Um, let me let me think. Yeah, you know, I, I guess I do. Um, what I... Well, I, you know, I, I still have, like, a lot of issues with my leg and stuff. Because when it healed, it actually grew back bowed. So, like, you know, your normal your normal, your normal oh, bone man. is going to be like this. But mine grew in like this. Okay. Uh, so an incredible bow. Um um and 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 they were basically telling me that they might have to go back in and like re-break it Yikes. which was like the ter the most terrifying thing it is terrifying yeah um shoot and and, and then they were like well because they couldn't perform reconstructive surgery uh when i first broke it because the break went all the way up to my growth plates so if they had it, it would have been really likely that um they would have messed up my growth plates. Mm. Uh, and then this leg would have stopped growing. Oh, yikes. Um, or it would still keep, it would keep growing, but it would be uh, incredibly stint, uh, stinted. Gotcha. Compared to my other leg. And at the time, when I broke my leg, I was probably like five foot nothing. 
uh, and now I'm six foot three. Uh, and so there would have been a significant um, kind of height difference between my two legs. Um, see you, Shadow Taxes. We're, we're glad to have you. See you, homie. How's that beard looking? Beard looks really good, man. I'm actually pretty happy with that. I, too, hate Kelsey. She's the worst. <laughs> Who's that at the door? Who is it? It's the female man. No, wait. The female man. The female. Mailman. Yeah. Welcome, Kels. Welcome to the stream. We got real deep this stream. We were talking real life stuff. Yeah, we we left the world Woo. of the Forgotten Realms and went right into the American. You know who showed culture. up on stream? This is very warm. You know who showed up on stream today? Well, you know who? Girl with a brush. Cool. Isn't that pretty sweet? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was geeking out a little bit. Sup, fam. Do you just toss your hair? <laughs> Kelsey, so Kelsey, who do, you, who do you think millennials are? Yeah, great. Our generation. I'm not, not a millennial, his. right? No, you're not. What am no. I? A jerk. Yeah. That's, that's, jerk. that's, you should have hit me with a like jerk. the hardcore, like. Uh, I forgot what you're called. Can I make up my own name? No, there's a name for you. But can I make up my own? I mean, yeah, but I'm not going to call you back. Cass, what are we? You're my age. What's our nomen declue? Nomen, what's the word I'm looking Nomenclature. for? Nomenclature. What year were you born? Uh, 97. You should know that. Come on. I don't know I that. I think you're looking for nomenclature. I didn't want to do the math. Nom de plume, maybe, is what... Nom de plume? Is that right? I, I think you're looking for nomenclature. No, I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but, but there's also, like, the French word that's like, what is your nom de plume? <laughs> I'm like looking at him like, no, no, I just no, said it three no, times. What's going on? Nomenclature? It's not no way. What? Okay. You are Gen X. Gen X? Or iGen. Or Gen Z. I get sorry, it. Sorry, say Z. Gen X? I was going to go, Z. wait a I'm minute. sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Gen Z. But, or iGen? Or iGen. I get the iGen. Aren't That's millennials funny. Gen X? No, we're no, Generation why. Y. Why? That's right, because we're wondering why. Why? Why? Yes. <laughs> I don't think that's why it does. Uh, You're absolutely wrong. Fourteen. Ellen, are older. you one of us too? Gen Z. Gen Z. We're the coolest generation. How about that little jingle, huh? Yeah, that was Josh, really nice. Wow. Yeah. 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 No, Josh <laughs> is a millennial. He gets it. We're misunderstood and blamed for everything. Yeah. We're the ones well, who thought the world was ours, only to realize that we're just part of it. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. What a time to be alive! What you painting? King Actel? Yeah. Cool. The one and only. I'm just about done with him. Yeah, too. he looks really cool, dude. Yeah, he does. Ooh, that axe, though. That axe. <laughs> I'm really happy with the mistake, shield too. It was so funny. I think I like the, the shield is not kind of cool. Though. I gotta add like the little things here, but I'm just trying to get the fun stuff done. Every time I see King Axel, I want to make a dwarf. That doesn't surprise <gasps> me. Guess what? What? I went super ham and hardcore on my D and D world. Yeah. And it's, I I took. I I, I took like a big needle full of Lovecraft. Yeah. And I just. Good. Injected it right into it. Yeah. And I'm really enjoying it. Getting some Cthulhu in there? Uh, actually, I made my old, my old, my own old gods. Okay. Um, and I'm having a lot of fun with them. Because like, you get to just kind of throw syllables together. It'll just be kind of crazy. Yeah. So, yeah. like, Hearth Nor uh, is one I came up with. Or Zar Kun, who I think is the coolest. That's a cool name. Zar Kun. That's cool. The Birther. Okay. Um, did Chester the Court Jester show up today? No. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, chat. We need, I need your, I need your advice on this. Chester the Court Jester, has anyone seen him around before? Is he like a regular anywhere? He just started following me, that stream. Okay. Follow, following this, us, to that stream. See, I'm trying to figure out, oh, you know what? 
Because you know how Josiah does his whole, I'm not Chester anymore. If you think it is a manifestation of that. Uh, we have a friend who has a weird, what is it? It's like a porcelain goblin creature. It's a porcelain goblin that he puts in his Snapchat stories all the time. <laughs> We're going to make him so, well, he is a bit insane, so he it's named, okay. <laughs> he named it Chester. He made it a Twitter. <laughs> he says that they're not the same person anymore. That he's outgrown him. <laughs> <laughs> that Chester's trying to ruin his life. It's kind of dark. It's dark. But that's okay. Um, anyway, so last week, on Monday, yeah. in the stream, Chester... The court, the court jester. jester. was on, and Jake asked him... He seemed to be saying stuff he shouldn't know. Yeah. It was kind of like talking to, like, a time travel, you know? Like, you know... What was like, he saying? They were, he was just like, tell me more about Josiah. I want to know all oh, about... Oh, it was definitely him. I want to know... I didn't know he said that. Yeah. Oh, that's so him. So I laughed because I said Jake's key, like, like reasoning <laughs> reasoning for thinking it was it was Josiah was because no one would ever want to ask about Josiah. <laughs> Except for Josiah's mom, maybe. Yeah. Oh, oh. Mary. 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 I want to meet his parents. Hey, Craig. 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 Hey. Ellen oh, says, Ellen says, no, get out. <laughs> Sounds like their relationship's like ours. Boy, I wish you would be a girl. I don't want to. Just kidding. I don't want to play the game. I just want to be your friend. I don't want to be your, I don't, don't want to be bored by you anymore. So I have a show. Thank you, Tay. Thank you for being to me. I'm not personally attached. <laughs> I didn't understand half of those words. <laughs> that was the point. Man. So man, Kels, oh man. Kels and I have a, uh, what's it called? The elephant gift exchange? A white elephant gift exchange. Yeah. Oh, and awesome. I, and I bought dog butt magnets. Oh, I was wondering what those are. And Play-Doh for Josh's gift. And then some slippers, Toblerone, and a mug for the thing that I bring. Which, whatever. You know, women like because like you're supposed that, to bring right? like a guy gift right? and a girl gift, is that right? Yeah, but I don't understand the Bogus. difference. So yeah, I do a funny gift and a serious gift. I don't see gift. gender. Gender. Uh, what, Cass? I mean, I see it. But... <laughs> Craig, he'll never run out of figures to paint. He's yeah, he's got a whole entire closet we'll, over here. We'll paint ourselves. Also, he'll just buy more. Yeah. Also, I most of those I'm kind of sick of already. Most of his Christmas list is actually. Yeah miniatures so yep. oh eagle how un-american of them what they misspelled eagle on a Where? quiz Cass said four different people misspelled the word eagle on a quiz i was grading e a g e l e eagle no yeah i know no use it in a word uh, four people you didn't catch the thing i said use it in a word use it in a word <laughs> Good job, bud. <laughs> you the real MVP. It wasn't just one guy. Egale. <laughs> Egal. I am Egale. Egal. 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 Do you have any Egal. fun stories from the home front, aka school? Me? Yeah. Mm, today? No, I don't think so today. Today was a pretty chill, easy day, which was good. It was a nice change. We had a intense debate. Well, not debate. It was just a discussion about pancakes, waffles, or French toast this morning. Um, which I is best. Which class is it that you have all these weird discussions with? Multicultural literature. Oh. Uh, except the water is wet thing was uh, my oral comm class. Cause they it just, sounds like such an oral comm just, thing. I did not bring it up. That just happened, and I wasn't gonna. Stop so what it. was what was your multicultural lit uh... question? Yeah. Pancakes, waffles, or French toast? Pancakes. Mm mm. Seven hundred percent of the time. Mm -mm. Waffles ninety five percent of the yeah. time. My favorite all oh. time is phenomenal French toast. You cannot beat thick brioche bread made with vanilla. I think you can with matter. a pretty awesome buttermilk pancake. No. Nope. Wow, so this is a uh, Waffle House, huh? This is Gosh, a Waffle House. I think this is where the last stream I appear on, okay? Cass says French toast, too. French toast! Cass! 
I'm supposed to be. We're the same age. Yeah, you're supposed to be completely we're I, the same. We're I, Jim. You have to back me up here. <laughs> the generation of I. You know who I wish I. You know, sometimes you've seen New Girl, right? Yes. Sometimes I wish I was Schmidt. Yeah, I wish you were Schmidt too. Yeah. Wow. Cass. That's, I felt very Schmidt yes. when I did my. Yeah. We're supposed to be the same. Ooh, Walk Ellen is, says they aren't comparable. Hmm. 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 Interesting. Hmm. I want. I want to hear. I want to hear more on that, Ellen. How they're not. Sounds possible. like a scapegoat of an answer. Oh, Josh is calling you out, Ellen. Uh oh. Uh oh. Them fighting words. Them fighting words. Not deciding is the correct answer. That's what I think that is. <laughs> I am uh, impartial on the pancake, French toast waffle debate. Craig, tell us more about your pancakes. How are they? How are they? similar slash different than our pancakes i you want to try them, them oh. in a pan you know what's really great i want to try them um those potato latkes yeah mm. yep potato pancakes yeah potato pancakes are good they're those... thinner see i can i could get down with the uk pancakes i like thin oh pancakes. yeah mm. um we you know there's this really great place down in the hay market that we used to go to all the time when i was doing shows mm -hmm. um like hay market theater shows yeah okay that did amazing potato latkes. I wonder where it was at. Because I haven't had them since, but mm -hmm. I knew that they were catered from some place down there. Is there like a Jewish They might be gone. There's so bistro? many places that have... I don't know if that's there anymore. Hmm. I see what else would be really good because I can get into with my culture. I also think the waffle versus pancake debate is about absorbency. I like how you just completely ignored my... What did you say? I can. I, I want to go to those places so I can learn about my culture. Because you told the stream that you're part Jewish. Oh, no. Jake found out that he's part Jewish, like, the last month. Did you do a 23andMe thing? And no, I just I just followed my, my ancestry back. Because um, there, there had always been debate. Because if you look at my grandma, she looks incredibly like the stereotypical, like, Jewish grandma. Yeah. Uh, and she also talks the same and does all that kind of stuff. And so we traced our lineage back, and it turns out that we are... What's this? Yeah, I get what you mean, Ellen. Um, we, we traced, uh, you know, like the lineage back. Yeah. And we ended up uh, finding out that my great-great-grandmother and grandfather were um, Jewish Germans who fled to Russia. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of those here. G yeah, Germans from Russia. Yeah. And then from... Russia, they came to here. Yeah, there's a whole um, museum about them. Right, but then they changed. They kept their surname of Vogel, which is a German Jewish name, but then they changed all their names to um, more Christian. Yeah. Uh, so, like, we are no longer religiously Jewish, mm -hmm. but we got the culture. We got the culture. Hi, Ozzy. Cass's sister Ozzy says hi to all three of us. Hey Ozzy! What up? Okay, hi. I'm gonna go wrap our white elephant presents. I'll let Jake have his seat back. Whatever. Okay, if you don't want it back. Well, I'll I do want it back. I just feel like you come in, you start like leaning in it. Don't. Don't. It's my chair. I can kick if I want. No. Bye, probably, stream. You probably shouldn't, though, Kels. Okay, bye. <laughs> oh. It's good to be back. IKEA furniture is not made to last. That's not IKEA. Target furniture is not made to last. You're not wrong. This time. I'm not okay. wrong about either of those things. You get what you pay for. I've never been to an IKEA. It's on my bucket list, though. Yeah, man, you should. It's pretty fun. I like. I like it. Um, because I heard that once you get started on the um, IKEA path. You have to go through the entire store before you can leave. Yeah. Um, That's what you do. You, you go through the whole store, and then once you're done going through the whole store, you pay at the end. You're right. But it's like, I heard that it's almost like a maze. Like, they put you on this path, and, and you can't turn around. You only can go forward. Uh, and then at the end, there's meatballs. I mean, you can turn around. just doesn't make sense to. Okay. Because the registers aren't behind you. Okay. You know so, I mean? so, you, so you, you can't get to the registers once you enter the store. You have to go through the entire place to get to the registers? Pretty sure. See, that's amazing. That's that... 
It's an experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're selling an experience. It's a smart move. Maybe that. Maybe I'll make a dungeon in D and D that's based off of IKEA. After I go, that's a good idea. <laughs> the dungeon of IKEA. <laughs> you shall not turn back, for there are Swedish meatballs at the end. <laughs> IKEA is a liminal space. I I want to play with a a lich. That's that's what I want to play with in D and want I I want to I want to get a lich. You go to, like, a warehouse thing before the registers, at least the one I went to. So you can't even get what you want until right at the end. That's amazing. You can't always get, get what you want. want. But if you try sometimes, you just might find. Is, is Ikea <coughs> <coughs> Swedish? Or? I'm pretty sure it's Swedish. Yeah. All the names for the stuff, like right, because they're all like the super funny, like Swedish, yeah, Dusseldorf, yeah, <laughs> think... the Dusseldorf chair. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. <laughs> Remember last Monday when we talked about how Jake talks himself into a corner? <laughs> it's proving itself true. Yes. Ja Ikea is Swedish. Ja. Mmm. The Swedes. I know how to make Minecraft and great furniture. Ja. Is that how the Swedes say yes? That's a lot of fun. I, I could get behind Ja. But what's no? Is it like na? Sounds like surfer talk <laughs> nah dude josh would you hang out with me if i talked like that all the time no no oh. wow <laughs> you know i understand i get it uh <laughs> i mean i don't mind if you do it every so often all the time it's game over man game over sorry okay well we have 15 minutes left jake i wish i could send you a picture of my list of your quotes Cass, that sounds terrifying uh tweet it at me <laughs> I want to see what uh, I want to see what stupid stuff I've said and how someday they'll come back to haunt me. You know what I love? Hmm. Cass does these uh, hmm. like stream recap. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna pull them up. Where she's like my favorite stuff on stream from today, and she does that. I'm gonna start retweeting those because those are really fun. I think I did start retweeting them, but I... is retweeting something people do? Yeah. Okay, so like, it's not like weird to retweet something? No. Okay, cool. Why would the feature be there if it was weird? Well, I thought it was like, because I always retweet our thing because I feel like that's something that both of us are part of. Uh huh. But so I can retweet something even if it doesn't have to do with me. So there's a couple like unique ways you can use a retweet. Uh huh. Um, one of the cool ways is if someone asks you a question that a lot of people ask you. Yeah. You can re you can quote tweet. Okay. And answer that question in your quote tweet. And so what'll happen is it basically you'll share that tweet with everybody, the question, as well as Welcome I own seventy seven. Glad you're here, man. Yeah, thanks. We're we're learning about Twitter. Okay, so quote tweeting. That's where you get a comment on the actual tw like tweet you're you're sharing. Okay. And then uh when you just retweet it, you're just sharing that tweet. Alone, you know what I mean. Oh. Okay, okay. So because I I always thought that retweeting was just something like oh I'm involved in this like uh, check it out. But if I didn't, okay, that makes sense. No, See, you can use it to share something you think is cool as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, guys, I'm really new to Twitter. I'm really new to social media in general. Um, it was always something that I kind of like strayed away from. Um, but uh, but I'm I'm, 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 I'm glad I'm here. Look, we have two here. here. Yeah. Okay. Oh no! Go move fast. Oh yeah, okay. Throw some shade down. Here are uh, the stream highlights from three days ago. The notorious JFP needs sleep. Someone knock him out and take his finals for him. Uh, that is still an offer, by the way. If uh, anyone wants to just knock me out and uh, dress up as me and go take my finals, 
let me know. Um, I'll send you all the information you need. What's up, Cass? You gonna, gonna knock me out? Take my final for me? Uh, exhibit A. That makes me a man among people. I don't know the context for that, but I'm guessing it's something I said. Because it is... Um, Sounds like something you yeah. said. <laughs> Girl Power by Kelsey Greer. I remember that. The Once a Month. That was a you thing. Um, <laughs> Glowing Axe is an A+, which is still uh, relevant. Um, cliffhanger. Desert Stuck. That um, was the Cliffhanger character from Between the Lions. So, guys, we are uh, relatively done with Axe Helm. The... All the pieces are painted. The only thing left to do is the is the glow from the axe itself. Let me get this guy in focus here. Ugh. How's that? He looks awesome. Is that in um, focus? Yeah, I'm sorry. Cass just... Cass probably just said one of the most repulsive things I think I've ever ever seen. What'd she send? In my in, in, entire life. Um, oh, by the way, Jake... We missed you a couple weeks ago. Uh, we were sad you couldn't be here. But she spelled it B-E-H-I-R, like the creature. Ah! Uh... <laughs> no! Uh... Oh! Dad! Uh... I told you not to come and watch! Wonderful human being. All right. <laughs> He looks really good, man. I'm pretty happy with him. So, guys, this is probably the last stream we'll do with Axe Helm. Cool. I think I'm going to do all the light reflection stuff very slowly and carefully <coughs> on my own without any pressure. And so the next time you'll see this guy is in a photo. So I'll take a picture of him when he's all nice and done with the reflection of the axe, and hopefully it looks good. But I feel I feel very satisfied with Yeah, where, I think he looks awesome. Where he's ending. So there we go. So next up will be uh, probably, probably going to keep up with the Bahir. The be here. So yeah, sweet. So be sure to join us Monday when we continue this sucker. Ugh. And then I'll actually be out of town Friday. So. Are we gonna do a uh... pre-record? Yeah. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. We'll uh, talk. Um. Yeah. We'll we'll talk about it. We'll figure it out. Cause I may I may just want to do just like a fun non-painting. Yeah. Stream. We'll be in Chicago. Might just do like a hey we're walking around Chicago stream. Oh, that'd be cool. Maybe. But. Um. Uh, I hope you guys can all be here. Yeah, we really want you to... <laughs> I stole it, Cass. I stole your joke. We really want you to be here. Be here. Next Monday. We will be here. Yep. So we hope you are too. Alrighty. Okay. Stream, have a wonderful have a wonderful rest of your, your weekend. Hope you enjoy it. We're glad to see everyone. Uh, we had a great time. Um... Yeah, we'll see you on Monday. Yep. Uh, for some more mini painting stuff. Uh, remember to follow us on Twitter uh, and share all your creative endeavors with us. Uh, we're still wanting to see some stories for King Axum, uh, Cass, um, uh, and anyone else who wants to um, send something out to us. Um, what else? Um, Oh, Cass, I want to see the list of quotes, because I want to see how much I need to repent for. Um, and other than that, send us your minis. We want to see your minis. Um, yeah. I don't know if you are still in chat, um, Edric, but if you are, uh, send us send us whatever you buy. I want to see what, you, what you're painting. Um, all right, that's us. Bye, guys. Thank you.